Hello and welcome back to another episode here on the Craft Beer Climbing Channel. And today we're talking about something that's not craft beer. <gasps> but it's okay because I 100% consider this beverage to be a craft beverage. And I have with me today two fantastic companies here in Arizona that make mead. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Before we cover our two mead companies here, we're gonna talk a little bit about the history of mead. We're not gonna go super into detail, mainly because there's a lot there, but we're gonna to touch on some of the basics. Mead is credited to being one of the oldest forms of alcohol pretty much known to man. In fact, there's evidence that suggests that it existed in China and India over 4,000 years ago. In ancient Greece, mead was called ambrosia, or sometimes even nectar, and was believed to be a drink made for the gods. And then obviously probably more well known due to the cultural takeover of Viking and Viking lore is mead's popularity amongst the Viking warriors. Much like ancient Greece, mead had very deep roots in Viking life, religion. Mead had such a huge impact, it was deeply rooted in pretty much everything Viking. Now, mead is oftentimes synonymous with the word honey wine, which is technically incorrect. Wine is a type of alcohol made from the fermentation of berries or other fruit juices, whereas mead is made from the fermentation of honey. In fact, mead traditionally is made with three ingredients, water, honey, and a fermenting agent, yeast, grain, something of that sort. So wine and mead are actually two very different beverages. But we're not gonna split hairs. On to our companies. I have with me today two fantastic companies from here in the state of Arizona. To your right, I have Drinking Horn Meadery based out of Flagstaff, Arizona. And to your left, I have Superstition Meadery based out of Prescott, Arizona. Now since I'm already enjoying some strawberry mead by Drinking Horn, we'll cover them first. Drinking Horn was born here in Flagstaff, Arizona in 2014. And they really do focus on making as close to traditional meat as they possibly can. All of their meads start with that base three ingredient blend before they add whatever juices to them. In the case of what I'm drinking, we have strawberry mead. I also have their latest black cherry and a bottle of prickly pear, which I've obviously been drank for quite some time. Now, Superstition Meadery, on the other hand, is a little bit different. Superstition Meadery was established in 2012, as we already covered in Prescott Valley, and I would say they focus more on the innovative side of mead making. Case in point, this bottle here was a bottle of their peanut butter jelly crime, puns for days, a blueberry mead that they added peanuts to to give the sensation of having a peanut butter jelly sandwich. Similarly, they also have what they call session meads, which are canned meads, believe it or not, as if looking at the cans was any indication of what it might not be. But we have a mimosa-inspired mead here, and then we had a blueberry milkshake mead here. I haven't had the mimosa-style mead yet, so be sure, if you're not already following me on TikTok, Instagram, and Untapped, to check those platforms out for the review of this guy. And if you feel like digging through the archives a little bit, you can actually find the review of the Blueberry Dreamboat Blueberry Milkshake mead on Instagram and Untapped. This was a wild drink. It was crazy to think of it's crazy to think of mead in a different form than what I'm used to, so having it in a drink style or a can style was really something wild, but it was also very good. Now I hope this opened your eyes a little bit in the world of mead. There is a ton of information there and a ton to learn, but I hope this was enough of an intro for you to get your interest sparked in enjoying some mead. If you find yourself in Flagstaff, Arizona, check out Drinking Horn Meadery. They have their very own mead hall, which is freaking incredible, I might add. Or if you find yourself in Prescott Valley, and now even downtown Phoenix, you can find yourself at Superstition's tasting rooms to try their meads. Both Superstition and Drinking Horn distribute their meads as well outside the state of Arizona, so if you're lucky, you might be able to find some in your states. I personally feel like mead gets a bit of a negative stigma. Not entirely sure what it stems from, but much like craft beer, there's a mead for everybody. If you prefer your drinks to be a little bit drier or snappier, there's a mead for that. Similarly, if you prefer the sweeter side of things, there's a mead for that as well. So don't judge a book by its cover. There's always something for everybody out there. And I'm hoping that me sharing this with you opens your eyes a little bit and you'll want to go out there and try some mead. And as I said, I cannot recommend these two companies from Arizona enough. So thank you for joining me this time. You know the rules. Climb hard, crush cans, and repeat. Drink responsibly. Have a great night.